Hi, welcome to episode two of Wild Woman. Uh, for those of you listening and not watching, it's recorded from my car. And I'm recording it from my car because, yeah, that's just when the idea came to me to um, say something about my new podcast, Wild Woman. I recorded the first episode a week ago with the wonderful Rebecca Wolfson a therapist and healer from Dublin. And if you haven't already checked it out, I highly recommend it. I learned so much from listening to her and it's really inspired me to go on and produce more episodes and introduce more interesting, inspiring, wild women who I've been learning from every day and continue to do so. And I want to share that with more people. So Wild Woman, the podcast, just to, as I said, give a little bit of background. The idea really came from reading the book Women Who Run With The Wolves by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. I'm sure some of you might have heard of it. It's a classic book around a long time. I was given a present of it 10, 15 years ago. And it just, I suppose it wasn't the right time. I picked it up didn't read it, um, flicked through it. And only a few weeks ago, I was reminded by someone. I was in a lovely holistic shop and I was talking to the guy there and I was just explaining how I was feeling, which is I was feeling this really strong energy, life force, fire, spirit, kundalini, whatever you want to call it. Lots of different names, but basically I could feel this my own life force energy, like really getting strong and sort of rising in me. And I could, it was almost overwhelming at times. Now I do yoga, I walk, so I know movement helps me, but still I felt this needs to be directed or it needs to be harnessed. Like this is very powerful and it's very creative energy. Um, I didn't, um, and I suppose, I think that has been happening I'll talk a little bit about it in a minute, but I feel this has sort of started back in 2016 when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I'm only halfway through the book, but everything that I've been experiencing really, um, what would I say, nearly replicates some of the things she talks about in the book. But I'll just say one thing, it firstly, is I think which was sort of like a trigger. I started um, a drumming class, a community spirit drumming class. I've shared it on my social media, some of the little videos from the group about I had been involved in the class a number of years ago felt called back to it again another synchronistic sort of experience that led me to it but I went back to it a couple of months ago and I ever since then I've just been feeling it's the vibration of the drums being in a group it's a group of people of all levels of all interests of all backgrounds of all genders of all ages of all everything as we are meant to be totally diverse and unique and expressing ourselves uniquely. And this really, really is what happens in the drumming class. It's anyone can come, it, you know, it, it's not about different levels and it's about the group, what the group, what the group becomes when everybody brings their own unique essence and gifts and just shares and drums and their life force, I suppose, is the way to describe it. And Eamon always says that at the beginning of the class. And it's just, it's just magic what we create. And I think that has woken that up in me. Um, yesterday, he said in the class, Eamon is the guy who runs the class, that someone described it to him, because it's hard to put into words unless you're there, what sort of magic is created with this group energy coming together. No one person can do it on their own. Um, and it's important that each voice is different and unique because that's what makes up this beautiful harmony and sound and rhythm and just fabulous. But he said it touches the place places that a therapist can't reach. And I thought that is so true. And someone else said it's it's the spaces within the spaces. And... You just have to experience it really to um, get that feeling and know what's possible within yourself, what's available to you outside of drumming, what's available to you in every moment. And I think that's what started. So, yes, I'm going off on the drumming, but the drumming, and it's very interesting in the book, 
she talks at the very beginning how we access wild woman, the wild woman nature, which to me, and it's described in the book, but it's our instinctive nature, our intuitive nature, our bravery, our fire, our spirit, our creativity, our joy, our freedom, our wildness, our flow, um, integrity, like living tr truthfully and authentically from that place, your your heart, your soul, your nature. Um, and I love the compare, you know, the wolves, the, you, if you read the book, you will see because the wolf embodies these qualities and it's also very territorial so it sort of marks its territory and I think that's really important for women we haven't been taught to do that to to hold our own space and to have healthy boundaries around us that we are living in our truth and authentically we are there for others but not at the cost of our own well-being and our true nature our wild nature and in the book also talks about you know, what happens when we stifle it or through societal sort of norms and culture and family, we we sort of try to fit in and we compress ourselves into a box that we don't fit. Our true feminine nature and our feminine energy. And I'll just say here as well, this podcast is um, me interviewing women who I believe embody this nature and we're endeavouring to, as we all are, I am, I know I'm just learning and, you know, what they have learned and what their experience of it is, how they understand it, how they live it, how they embody it, what they can share with others and other women to help them do this. But it is also relevant to men. And I interview women because I am a woman and but we all we all um, have feminine and masculine energies within us. And obviously, as a woman and in that gender, you've chosen to to embody that in this life. But it's really important for all that we are in balance in the masculine and feminine. But it's I do believe that we're at a time on the planet. I don't just believe it. I think it's it's just from my, it's common knowledge, I think. And everything I've learned and understand is that. You know, we've been living in very much a masculine energy, patriarchal dominated world for I don't know how long. I've heard people say thousands of years, but however long it's shifting now. And I think most of us, you know, that it will involve a certain amount of collapse of some of the old um, in our planet. I love how the astrologer Pam Gregory talks about don't look back at the collapsing scenery. There are things that have to go in our lives individually and collectively and it is time and it is time to welcome the new and to create the new and I, I think a big part of that is welcoming the feminine energy and nature and wild nature back into balance with the masculine the masculine is absolutely important but we've been out of balance for years and I think women particularly I know from personal experience I'm really feeling it so it sort of came about I think I might have said this at the beginning, this idea for this podcast came about very intuitively and spontaneously. So I've just gone with it and I will continue to go with it as long as there is interest in people who want to have conversations around this topic and help others, men and women. Um, my journey with this, just to, to finish up, I'm going to make this a short enough recording, really I suppose it's been going on all my life, but I would say since I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2016, I've talked about it a lot. I've written a book on the topic, Gifts from the Devastation. Um, and I actually wrote a chapter of the book called Feminine Wisdom. And I didn't really, I did sort of know a little about it, but I knew a lot of women had come in, very strong, powerful women who were standing in their true nature came into my life at that time and really helped and guided me um, onto the path I'm now on. But what I do, I have seen, and I, the book talks about this. This is not just about the book, but the book is sort of part of the, I suppose, the um, seeds for this podcast. But she does talk in the book about, you know, what happens to women or women when they are not living in their wild from their wild nature, whether it's it could be from childhood, it could be something that happens, but basically it's stifled. 
you know, we're not living from that instinctive, wild, true, intuitive place, that creative place. And what happens and what she described is exactly how I felt before I was diagnosed with breast cancer. She talks about us becoming stuck and depressed and dry and angry, you know, this near almost overwhelming anger at the world because you know um when i used to hear the words creativity i used to get so angry when i'd see creative people around me it was like it was boiling inside of me and i didn't understand it i just thought there's something wrong with me that i can't fit in in this world um in this box that i've been trying to and she talks about putting on the pretty clothes dressing up and looking the part but you're dying inside and that is how i felt um, I'm not saying that's for everyone. I'm talking about my unique life experience and how I'm meant to be living. Um, but the damage it does and that when women and women reclaim their true wild nature, they become abundant and creative and spontaneous and connected to nature, to their spirit, to their energy, their authentic authenticity, their voice, their truth, their joy, their excitement you know this this is what the creative energy is and this is what I believe so 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 many women need to reclaim I'm I, I see the difference in the women I've been introduced to and this is no disrespect to anyone else because I've I've been you know in the sort of very disconnected um um in a disconnect disconnected from my true nature I mightn't have called it wild woman nature, but I knew I was disconnected from my my voice, my, you know, my connection to nature, to God, to the divine, to life force, to all of that, to universe, whatever you call it. Um, I think as the lovely Rebecca said, whatever makes the trees grow, you know, um, whatever that energy and essence is, there is no doubt it exists. Um, and we are fractals of it and we have that within us. And, you know, I, I, I just believe this is how we feel fulfilled. This is how we feel joy and get meaning in our lives when we harness it and we connect with it. And that has been my experience and it continues to be. And the drumming and various things have sort of um, uh, activated it more in me. One thing I will say, and this is what I'm very interested in doing the podcast as well, is that as we sort of release and connect and bring give life to this part of ourselves it's a very powerful force of energy it's like we become a channel and if you think of energy constantly moving once this gets moving in us any of the emotional blocks or energetic blocks that are within our our physical body can be if you think of a blocked pipe or you know and you know you force with full pressure through water you know, you're going to see this, boom, it's going to, you know, um, blow out or the block or move it along. And my sense of it is and my experience of it, this has been happening to me for quite a while as it's it's been a pro slow process. I think it might have, and I think it happens, it's to trust as well that it happens at the right time for us and in the right way that we can manage it. Because if all of this that's happening to me now had happened six, seven years ago, I might have, I probably did have a few breakdowns, but it would have been a major one because when all old wounds or traumas or things we've suppressed, just experiences that we've expressed, it's suppressed even, you know, they might, they're not all necessarily huge traumas, but they build on each other. And you know, on think of it, layers and layers and layers. So as they start to be released, we have to feel them. We have to feel the actual energy of it for it to be released. That is the process as I understand it and I've experienced it. And that can be painful. So, you know, we can need support. We can need tools and just um, ways to, to understand how to go through it. But it absolutely is possible. And, you know, I talked to Rebecca about this as well in the first podcast that my sense was I suppressed so much for years and really I think it was out of fear and the story I was told and told myself about, you know, um, you know, I have to be a certain way. And if I let some of the things I've suppressed out, I'll probably die. I'll get lost in them. And it's not the truth. It is not the truth. And I can say that 1000 percent. And this is what keeps us small and disconnected when we believe this. It is not true. The truth is 
that we are meant to be wild woman, fully connected and living and channeling and being this beautiful creative energy that we have the gift of in this life. And things will show up and challenges, but they just strengthen us. They strengthen us. And, you know, all of the challenges, particularly cancer for me, have really, really, um, what's the word? Um, they talk about, you know, the diamond being made out of pressure and heat and the beautiful diamond. And, and, and that is the, the analogy I can think of right now is that that has to happen. The more challenges you don't have challenges, you know, how, how do you know what you're made of? Yeah. How do you know? How do you find it? How do you find something that maybe has been suppressed um, and you don't even know is there until it was shown to you? And it often takes our challenges to do that. So that's another part of the podcast I want to explore, not it just to be about, yes, what is Wild Woman? Hearing it from other women and how they live and embody it and how they support others and how they have come through their own traumas and shadows and still do this is this is ongoing but we start to nurture it then and that's my passion in my life because it has opened up experiences people doors um like the drumming so many things writing and just being out in nature so so much life becomes very exciting and even with all the challenges you you start to see that you have everything you need within you to navigate them and come out even stronger and that you created all of this so that you would remember it. So I'll leave it there. This recording, the short podcast turned out to be a little longer, but I really hope you enjoy the, the interviews that I will be doing. Um, I've just realized what amazing women I've connected with and I know I will continue to connect with and learn from and I hope you do too. Um, so thanks for listening or watching me and my car. And uh, yeah, really excited, really excited for this. So thank you. And I hope to see or hear or connect with you on Wild Woman. And if you are a wild woman or you're discovering or recovering or reclaiming your wild woman nature and you would like to come on and talk about that experience, please get in touch. All my um, links or contact details are in the links below if you're watching or on YouTube or in my bio. Um, if you're on Spotify as well, you can find me on Instagram and on Facebook. And uh, yeah, look forward to connecting. Lots of love.